What is up Mako Madness fans? This is Dan checking in from SeaWorld Orlando and today we have a special thing going on today and uh, special thing is not Drew from In The Loop but uh, rather we have a special event going on at the Nautilus Theater for Mako so let's head inside and check it out. And here we are now guys at the Nautilus Theater for the Mako Rising Show. So we're gonna head inside right now and check out what we got here. Hopefully they'll let us film. If not, well, we're gonna cut the film right about here. So, uh, bye. Well, as of right now, we're allowed to film in here. Uh, we'll see come showtime, but inside, we do have some lights up on this screen right here, and it's not too packed in here, and uh, because of the low attendance, it looks like they're trying to drive some uh, enthusiasm in here, and well, I got some pretzels. So they're giving out free pretzels for the show, too. It's time for our special sneak peek at the thrills to come. SeaWorld proudly introduces today's special presentation of Mako Rising. Ooh. And now, please give a warm welcome and make some noise for your host of Mako Rising. Now, all of us here at SeaWorld are so excited about our new ride, Mako. Has anybody here heard of it? Whoa. I have. Yeah? Well, it's pretty hard to miss all the signs in that huge construction site next door, right? Well, the truth is, we are so proud of what's coming your way. We couldn't help but share at least a little sneak peek. So, are you guys game for an insider's look? Yeah. All right, well, first, I thought maybe we should get to know a little something about the animal this ride is named after. So, let's take a look and meet the Mako. The ocean, Earth's greatest treasure, and home to more than 450 plus species of sharks. For sheer intimidation, there's the sand tiger shark. With its many exposed rows of teeth, the sand tiger might look menacing, but only if you're a fish. They're generally harmless to humans, unless provoked. For truly unusual qualities, consider the nurse shark. Unlike some other types of sharks, nurse sharks don't always have to swim to survive. Instead, you're likely to see them sitting on the ocean floor in the company of other nurse sharks, all using their mouths like vacuum cleaners to forcefully suction fish and urchins from between the rocks. Some think the noise sounds like a nursing baby. So, nurse sharks. Another species you'll find on seabeds is the spotted Wobegon shark. It kind of looks like a frilly rug, so it's also called a carpet shark. But you won't be able to pull the rug out from under this one. The Wobegon can strike prey in as little as 25 milliseconds. That's fast. Speaking of fast, we're now ready to meet the Mako out in the open depths where the big fish swim. With recorded swimming speeds of 21 miles per hour and bursts up to 50, short fin Makos are faster than any other shark species. They need speed to hunt some of the fastest animals in the ocean, including swordfish, tuna, and even other sharks. Makos can swim incredible distances and have been seen leaping at least 20 feet in the air and found diving more than 2,400 feet below the surface. That's like diving the height of SeaWorld Sky Tower times six. The great thing is that many of the types of sharks you just saw actually live here at our shark encounter. So you can see them in person and up close right next door. Has anybody been over there? Woo! Yeah, it's super cool, right? If you haven't gone over there, please check it out. Now, on to the shark that this ride is named after, <laughs> all right? In order to really appreciate the Mako, I want to try something a little bit different. Let me see a show of hands. Do we have anyone in the audience who's six feet or taller? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. All right. If you could go ahead and stand up for me, please, so we can all stare at you. Lovely. All right. Woo! Man, you guys are super tall by human standards. But if you look up here at the screen, you can see a six-foot-tall human. And here is an average-sized mako shark, at least as long as a tall human, and in some cases, almost twice as long. Whew. Let's give a round of applause for our mango sized humans. Sorry, guys. Well, now you guys know a lot about the mango shark. About its speed, its power, its agility, all the things that inspired the actual rap. So, 
Are you guys ready for your first look at our animated CGI version of the ride? Alright, because whether you're a die-hard coaster fan or you just love incredible thrills, the Mako is not only Orlando's newest coaster, it's one that's going to have everyone talking. Let's take a look. on top of things. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll show you what happens after the drop a little bit later. But in the meantime, I'm told this is one for the record books. So, here are the numbers. The Mako is going to be 200 feet tall, have a, to have a mile of track, and a top speed of 73 miles per hour. So, when the Mako opens, it will be Orlando's tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster. And all of those record-setting numbers earn it, the it earn it the title of Orlando's first hyper coaster. So, you can imagine everyone was pretty excited when they were building this thing, right? Well, here's a look as they reach one of their most important milestones. Hi, I'm Sonny, Seward Atlanta's videographer, and right now I'm at the construction site for our new roller coaster, Mako. Now I've had the fun job of capturing all the behind the scenes stuff, but today you're going to come with me for a never before seen look. As you can see, it's really busy here, and that's because Mako is about to be reaching its highest point of 200 feet. And to see exactly what that looks like, I attached our Mako cam to the crane that's going to be lifting that 30,000 pound piece of track. Mako will be reshaping this city skyline, and it's surfacing this summer, so stay connected for more information. Thanks, Sunny. And if you head over to SeaWorld's Facebook page, you can see even more amazing videos of the Mako taking shape. But now, on to another matter. Relentless air time. Now, when the engineers talk about Mako, they keep using this phrase, air time, and I'm not really quite sure what it means. So, let's take it to the experts. Here's SeaWorld's own design guru, Mike Denninger, to give us the scoop. Hey everybody, I'm happy to give you a quick definition of air time. Here's how to look at it. You already know about Mako's speed and height. Well, add in the physics that come from some really quick twists and turns and drops and hills, and you come up with the formula for air time. It's our way of describing those exhilarating moments of acceleration when you feel nearly weightless, just like you're floating in your seat. And this is where Mako over delivers with over 10 unique moments of air time. I can guarantee you'll definitely enjoy all the thrills that Mako implies. And now, here's my colleague Brian Morrow with an even deeper look at Mako. Hey, thanks Mike, and hi all you coaster fans. Welcome to the maintenance bay of Mako. Now you just heard about the cool designs of this amazing animal. Well, we take that information and we actually create our attractions based on it. How does that all work? Well, I sit with the storytellers of the zoological team right here at SeaWorld Orlando, and they share with me the speed, the agility, and the hydrodynamic design of this amazing animal, which all creates this ride. So that way, when you're here experiencing Mako, all the thrills of it, they came directly from nature and the shark itself. And that's not all. We're building a whole new realm. It's called Shark Wreck Reef, and here you're gonna learn about all the sharks of the ocean, the dangers they face, and how you can make a difference for sharks in your simple, everyday actions at home. And hey, I got a secret to tell you. We're building a giant shipwreck, and it's huge. And this Mako, it's gonna swim right through the center of it. It's gonna be a finale like none other, and a near miss that you're gonna wanna experience right here at Mako. See you soon. Thanks, Brian. Well, now you know about the Mako's speed, power, and all that relentless air time, so I think it's about time we take a little Mako test of our own. So here, here, who here thinks they have what it takes to ride the Mako? Yeah? All right, okay, all right. Let me, let, me, let me see those hands up in the air. All right, all right. I want you in the purple shirt. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, absolutely. And how about, oh, you in the glasses, yes. Yes, the green glasses. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you were raising your hand. Or the person next to you. How about you? Yeah, come on up. All right. Yes, you. Yes. All right, come right on up. Yes, hello. Welcome. I love your dress. Join me up here on the stage. Hello, what's your name? Brooklyn, and where are you from? Michigan. All right, it's wonderful. A happy round of applause for Brooklyn. All right, and how about you? 
Juliana. Juliana, where are you from? Brazil, all right. So, the make is all about speed, right? So we're gonna test your speed. You guys want your swimsuits, yeah? Just kidding, it's not about swimming speed. This is about your brain speed, all right? So here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna tell you a little story about a day in the life of a short fit Mako shark. And you're gonna have to listen because it's gonna go pretty quick, all right? And then you're gonna answer some questions. Now look up at the screen right here. You'll only have as much time as it takes for that Mako shark to cross the screen to answer each question. And if the buzzer sounds, we'll just move on to the next question, all right? You guys got it? Let's give us a support audience. They got it. All right. So if you guys face the screen, game on. Here's the story. You're a 10 foot short fin mako shark traveling seven miles offshore of Costa Rica. Your ability to detect electrical impulses in the water helps you locate a large black fin tuna. Now, most sharks can't handle a fish this big and this fast, but the mako's are ideally equipped. So for you, tuna is now on the menu. You give chase and are closing in when you're suddenly distracted by the scent of blood in the water. You track the smell and find a small injured grouper, which you immediately seize on. You take four powerful bites, and then you sense a disturbance in the water. A large fishing boat is passing overhead, dragging a long net that almost snatched you in its path. It's only with the movement of your powerful tail that you are able to summon up instant speed to escape. You dive down to save the water, disappearing into darkness 1,000 feet below. And by sunset, you swim inland, close to shore. And you see a dolphin feeding on a shallow reef nearby. Now you've hunted all of before, but right now you're not hungry enough for a challenge that big. So you move on and prey on any small fish in your path. And by nightfall, you saw a journey of 36 miles. All right, did you guys get all that? Yeah, you're going to be great. All right, audience, well, let's give them a big round of applause. They got this. All right, lots of encouragement. I have absolute faith in you guys. All right, so remember, you're only going to have as much time as it takes for that shark to cross the screen for each answer, all right? Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. Question number one. You sense the electrical current from a large fish nearby. Name that fish. Tuna. 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 That's correct. You guys both got it. Good job. See, I told you it wasn't that hard. You'll be fine. You guys were totally listening. All right. Question number two. You found a grouper to eat. How did you find it? Blood. The blood in the water. That's correct. Good job, you guys. All right. Here we go. Question number three. How many bites did you take of the grouper? Four. That's correct! Four bites! Wow! That thing can't even get started. Oh. All right, here we go. Question number four. What powerful body part helps you avoid getting snagged in the fish net? Tail. That's correct! The tail! The jump! I think a great team. All right, here we go. Question number five. How deep did you go once you escaped the path of the net? Another feet. What the
being a person. Imagine all the twists, the turns, the speed, that relentless airtime, and then imagine a fully grown adult screaming like a very small child. <laughs> Thank you all so much. You've been a wonderful audience. Please give yourselves a big round of applause. Be sure to pick up your very special in-park offers. Just our way of saying thank you so much for joining us today for Make Go Rising. See you next time. 200 feet in the air. So long, everybody. Alrighty guys, so we just got out of the brand new Mako Rising show and something awesome to show you. Officially, Mako will open June 10th. So we have our first official confirmation right here on this banner. And we also got an email just a couple minutes ago uh, saying that the ride's gonna be open. So it is official, Mako, June 10th. Alrighty guys, so check this out. We actually have our first piece of Mako merchandise. One of the contestants that was in the show actually won this, so check it out. It's got all the stats for it, right here on the back, and then on the front, if you don't mind, thank you, we have that beautiful logo right there. So that is merchandise for Mako, guys. We should see a lot more coming soon. Oh yeah, Sky Tower is open and it's uh, got about a 20 minute wait. Yeah, let's still go though. Welcome aboard the SeaWorld Sky Tower. As you take your ride up to a height of 300 feet, we thought it would be helpful to share some SeaWorld tips that theater experience. Alrighty guys, so we're up 300 feet now and we're checking out the construction site for Mako of course. And we can see the water is back in the lake. So it's about 100% filled up now. And we still have crews out there working on some of the dirt. But what I wanted to point out is they do have crews up at the top of the lift. Did you know the working on some electrical. And we also have the station and transfer track that's received a lot of work. And we can see there, they have scaffolding, doing some painting. Queue line is just about done. And then down over here by the water, we have those poles that are down in the ground now, but uh, we'll see what happens with those. Alrighty, so we're over here at Shark's Underwater Grill, and if you remember, we had some of that shipwreck theming right here. Well, we have some new pieces that have been added to it. That blue right there up on top is new. And we should see a uh, sign coming very, very soon for this. But something to note over here. guys, we're over here by the Flamingo Boat Dock now, and as we can see, there is a backhoe digging out a lot of that dirt and getting water everywhere, but uh, we're digging out the ground here finally again. And as we take a look at the rest of the site, again, that concrete is all done, but our poles that I said uh, didn't look too fantastic last week are actually a little bit shorter. They've been cut, so it doesn't look so horrible, but there they go all the way down. So, at least a view from here, we're gonna walk around to the other side and see if we can see anything else. All right, so we're over here underneath all that netting and a couple things I wanted to show you. Right over here at the station, wow, we actually have some new paint and this is gonna be the final color for the outside of this building. It actually looks nice, that texture, everything else like that. That side needs a little bit of work. Not there just yet, but we have that and woohoo! We have lights on the brake run. So they've installed these. But looking good. One other thing I did want to point out is it looks like we have our first pieces of theming right here. At least for the big structure I see right there and it goes down towards the ground. Uh, not going to show uh, over the wall or anything else like that. But when uh, we got up close, we could actually see it has some rope on it and whatnot, but uh, it's probably something for the big ship. All right, so we're in the shark encounter this time, and check this out. We actually have a green screen here, and the reason for that is they can actually do photos where they're going to crop you in with Makos and everything else like that. During the presentation that we saw for the Mako Rising, they were actually giving out $5 coupons for the photo, and that's the screen, and as of right here, we can see the options that you have. One right there with the Mako, and then the one right there shows the front car, so it actually makes it look like you're riding. That's new though. Here off to the side of the building, we can actually see a couple of the workers here. Doing a little bit more textures, a little bit more painting on the side there. And they were adding fish on the other side, so I'm expecting we're gonna see more of that over here as well. 
And just a little bit further down, we can actually get our view of the station area. And we can see that cutout right there. We've gotten a little bit more work. We do have some guys that are inside the station. And then up on the lift, we actually have a wind anemometer and a guy way up there. So that's been installed. We also have proximity switches as well. Now over on the pathway that walks right by the front entrance, we have some new billboards that are up. And in fact, you can actually text that number right there to get updates, or you could just watch our page and get uh, updates even quicker possibly. But just wanted to show you, we have that one over there, one further on down, and then a couple over here off to the side as well. So new banners, new signs, things like that. And I wanted to show a real quick example of those fish that they're putting on the side of the building here. So we can see right there, a little bit of texture, a little bit of theming, but it's all adding to the whole area, which looks really, really nice. And we're now on the other side of the Flamingo Boat Dock, and again, we can see all of those posts in the ground. There's a couple that are taller than the others, but uh, pretty much they're uniform. And again, we'll get a zoom in on how they actually cut those pipes right there. And water is coming in the area. We still have those markers down on the ground, but uh, not sure if there's gonna be a pathway or something else. But uh, as we saw in that Mako Rising video, uh, they had a rendering for a splashdown. So it'd be very interesting if we actually see that splashdown happen. I haven't seen anything that looks like it will be, but uh, fingers crossed, guys. While I don't see them yet, I would expect lift to the lights to go up very, very soon. But I see all sorts of cables hanging off this. So I'm expecting it to be very soon, actually. Well, guys, that is going to do it for another SeaWorld Orlando Mako construction update. And as we saw, the new show, Mako Rising, was really awesome. Had a neat POV and some good information. And the construction site is really coming along still. We have new lighting, all sorts of proximity switches around the area. And we're going to have more updates for Mako until it opens on June 10th. So if you like what we do, follow us on Instagram, our Facebook, and our YouTube page at Mako Madness. And I will see you out on the Midway.